Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Your Story, Our Fight podcast brought to you by Lupus LA. Uh, thanks very much to our sponsors over at GSK for allowing us to tell these really important lupus patient stories. Um, we have a really important one today, actually. It's um, Kimmy Delahunty is joining us. And Kimmy, I think, speaks to uh, an aspect of lupus that we don't talk about as much as we probably should, and that's the mental health aspect. But um, what you'll see if you go to Kimmy's Instagram, Create by Kimmy, um, is just an unbelievably positive and bright and uh, incredible lupus advocate. And I think um, her story is really going to resonate with us today. And I'm so excited to have you join us. Welcome, Kimmy. Thank you. I'm so excited to join. So I know when you were first diagnosed with lupus, you had another diagnosis first. Um, mm -hmm. So tell us about, give me sort of the the nickel tour of your lupus diagnosis. And so we can at least have some, some underlying understanding of, you know, how it all started for you. Yeah, sure. So when I was a young teenager in, I think I was in eighth grade, right? So I was pretty young. Um, I was diagnosed with something called Addison's disease, which is a different autoimmune disease. It's an endocrine disease. Um, so before my lupus diagnosis, I had some experience with autoimmune disease. And I think that helped with my lupus diagnosis, which happened, you know, years later when I was in college. Um, and I think that, you know, having that prior diagnosis helped me to get diagnosed with lupus a little quicker. Um, so it happened, you know, pretty easily and we were able to figure out, you know, there's something wrong um, and it's not Addison's disease. And I had a great team of doctors that helped me discover that I did have lupus and had something else going on too. So your lupus, did your Addison's diagnosis go away when you were diagnosed with lupus? Was it, did they determine that what you really had in fact was lupus or do you have both? That is a great question. I have both. Um, so I still have Addison's disease and it's a chronic disease, just like lupus. It doesn't go away. And they discovered that I did in fact have that, but also had lupus in addition. And what were your early lupus symptoms? My biggest lupus symptoms were swelling in my fingers and hands and my knees, just a lot of joint swelling and pain, which is not associated with Addison's disease at all, which is how I knew like something's going on here. Um, so that was definitely my biggest one and fatigue, which carries is a symptom of Addison's and lupus. But when I was starting to experience fatigue, that was just ex way more extreme than I ever had before. I knew that something was going on. So how did in terms of, uh, you know, I want to sort of get into the mental health aspects, but so tell me kind of what was Kimmy like pre autoimmune diagnoses? Well, I think I was, because I was so young when I was diagnosed, I think it's, it's hard for me to be like, what was I like? Cause I was just a kid, you know, and right. I'm so different now. And I don't know, yeah. I don't know if that's because of my autoimmune diseases or just because I have grown up. Um, but I've always been a very creative person. So even before my autoimmune diagnosis, um, I was an artist, I was constantly creating in school. Um, you know, I was involved in all sorts of things. I was involved. I was a girl scout my entire life, um, kindergarten through 12th grade. I was on my yearbook staff and did all sorts of just like extracurricular things. I've always been someone who loves to create and give those gifts to other people. So before my diagnosis, I was the same way. Um, and I don't know that my diagnosis has really changed who I am, but it definitely has changed the way that I view life. And I think living with lupus and other autoimmune diseases has um, made me into a more positive person, which sounds interesting. I think, you know, you're like, how could that make you more positive? You're dealing with all these illnesses, but it's forced me to have to look beyond sort of the surface level of life and find deeper meaning in, in the little things in each day. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, I was diagnosed when I was 16. So in that same part of my, you know, part of your life and people did used to ask me, you know, what, what were you like before? And I, it's really hard for me to remember because, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't think about your health when you're 10 years old or 11 years old. It never was a part of your equation. 
Um, but I think people like us who are diagnosed early in our teenage years, um, it really just becomes part of the fabric of who you are. Um, but I do, I do think there's sort of two ways to go. And I think, um, especially in college, when you get this extra diagnosis of lupus, there is that potential anyway to, you know, to go more of a dark place or more of a, you know, to lose some of that bright light that you had. But I, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, that that's sort of one of the things that always fascinates me about people getting their lupus diagnosis is where, you know, is there a fork and, and which way do they choose? And it, it, is it that simple? Yeah, I think it's, it's interesting. Cause I think you're right that it's really easy to get that diagnosis and just feel so weighed down by it. Um, and just like, you know, what do I do now? And I think when I was diagnosed with lupus, it was very much like, um, it was very much not a positive experience with my doctor, just in general, you know, it's not the most positive thing to be diagnosed with something and be told there's nothing really you can do to, to fix this. Of course, there's treatment options and, you know, you figure it out, but it is a really heavy thing to hear. And I think that it is very easy to just sort of withdraw and feel negative about it. And, you know, I don't know why I, I didn't take that way in the fork, you know, I don't know why. I think I had a really supportive group of people um, that were supporting me, my family, um, friends in college that really helped me to get past that sort of initial diagnosis sadness and continue to live my life the way that I, I was. And in even improving in the way that I was living, you know, I think lupus really has allowed me to reflect on the things that are most important to me, the things that I want to focus my, my time on and the time that I feel well on, um, and also just how to listen to your body and know what it needs. Mm -hmm. Now you said you didn't have a positive experience when you were diagnosed with your doctor. Was this the same doctor who had diagnosed your Addison's rheumatologist? No. So this was a different, a different doctor. I mean, it was the rheumatologist, but a different right. doctor um, than who had diagnosed my Addison's disease. And when I was diagnosed with Addison's, I was, you know, with a um, pediatric doctor who was amazing. And then once I turned 19, they kind of were kicking me out. Right. <laughs> and so I had to go see a different doctor. Um, and I was seeing my primary doctor for a while, who was amazing, who was kind of helping me figure out, you know, what type of specialists do I need to see to figure out what's going on. And then I saw a rheumatologist who just, you could tell, was very overwhelmed with her workload, didn't have a lot of time to dedicate. And so I get it. I got a call that I needed to come in. And obviously that, that doesn't really happen very often where you get a call and they're like, you need to come into the doctor. So I, I knew that it wasn't great news. Um, right. And I, I was by myself. I went, you know, I'm what I was 19 at the time. So I'm 19 years old by myself in this doctor's office. And it was basically a 10 minute appointment. Her telling me I have lupus. I have to see her every three months. She handed me a pamphlet and I left and looked down at the pamphlet and realized it was in Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. So I was like <laughs> going back. I, can I have an, can I have an English pamphlet, please? <laughs> um, uh. So it was just, was, you know, not the best experience. I think because I felt very alone in that moment and in that very moment, I felt like there's no support here. Like, what am I going to do? I don't even know what lupus is. And she didn't really tell me. I went home and researched it. Right. Which is always dangerous, you know, when, when, you know, it is, it's hard because rheumatologists are really overworked. I mean, as, as much as um, our experience at Lupus LA is they really do have a hard time carving out enough time to talk to every newly diagnosed lupus patient. Um and it's one of the reasons we started this podcast, because we really want to send that message, you know, that that it's your doctor's appointment that, you know, you need to create a doctor relationship that that really benefits you. And I, so I'm curious to know whether you stayed with that doctor and it got better or was that sort of a turning point for you? I did stay with her for a little bit and then I ended up switching doctors because it didn't really seem to get better. And it seemed like she just really didn't have 
enough time that I needed it as Mm -hmm. a new patient. I feel like now I could probably see her and it would be fine. But as a new patient, I wanted someone who had a little bit more time to dedicate and and talk with me. So I ended up switching and seeing a different doctor who was great. Um, You know, eventually I switched and I had better experiences, but you can tell, you know, with every doctor that I see, every rheumatologist, I can tell like that they're busy. It's busy here. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, more so than some of my other doctors that I see. Right. No, I hear that. Uh, but I think that's good advice to really make sure you find a relationship that, that suits your needs and, Mm -hmm. and fits your, the way you handle your particular illness or any patient, how they handle their particular illness. Um, so tell me how, the lupus diagnosis changed into, uh, or changed you into an advocate? Yeah, I think, you know, at the time of my lupus diagnosis, I was in college and in college, I was learning a lot about social justice. And, you know, I went to a Jesuit university where service and social justice was really, is really at the heart of the education. And, and, um, it was something that I was very involved in, I'm really passionate about, but I hadn't really identified a cause that was like, this is my cause. You know, I, I think I was kind of searching for that. I was like, I, I want to become more involved in helping others and, you know, using my voice that I have to make change. Um, But I don't really have anything I'm extremely passionate about right at this moment. And then my lupus diagnosis sort of, you know, just happened to me. And, um, after I had sort of, you know, grappled with it a little more and just kind of gotten used to living with lupus, I decided, you know, I kind of want to share about this because I feel really alone. I don't know a single other person who has a chronic illness and I haven't since I was diagnosed with one as a child, you know, so it it was a lonely experience growing up Mm -hmm. and I'm sure you can relate to that. Um, and so I wanted to write about my experience, even if it just was a way to reach other people dealing with health complications or chronic illnesses to feel like they weren't alone. And as I started to do that, it, you know, it just has grown and it has turned into advocating and educating, but also just sharing, you know, some of the ways that our society is not, um, built to support people with illnesses, um, you know, whether that's in the workplace or, you know, with mental health or, you know, so many different ways. And so my passion grew just from sharing my story. Which I I love that you took sort of something that you were already really good at, the creative writing, the creative, the artistry, and and turn that into uh, your superpower, you know, for lack of a better word. And, and I think that's really something that, you know, I'm asked all the time, well, how can I get involved and how can I, what can I do to be an advocate? And I don't think people look sometimes to what their skill set is. What do they do? You know, I mean, this cause needs everybody from artists to lawyers. And, and I think there's, um, I think what you've done is really um, a good example for for turning your skill set into a powerful tool in advocacy Um, and has that also i guess changed the way your creativity has worked and your artist you know your your artistry Mm -hmm. and and your work has has that been influenced by your your lupus yes it it definitely has completely i think i'm always inspired by my journey with lupus and my journey with depression and Addison's disease and all these things, you know, in when I create and when I share, whether it's uh, writing about my own experience or creating art based off, you know, you know, something that inspired me from that day um, or wanting to put a visual rep- representation to something that is not so visible when you look at me. Um, And that has specifically, you know, come to life in some of my more, you know, I do digital art and graphic design. And I think when I create, I often am creating inspired by that sort of some sort of visual representation of what I'm dealing with and something that can inspire others, um, whether they're living with illness or not, and also advocate at the same time. So I love to create, you know, even if it's just little typography sayings, you know, of things that are are giving me positivity and visually representing them 
you know, I think, yes, of course, my, my lupus diagnosis has definitely influenced the way I create. And now I've created a whole Instagram page where all I do is create. And a lot of that is inspired by, you know, living with lupus and my mental health journey as well. That's terrific. Well, I encourage everybody to check out Create with Kimmy on Instagram. We're going to take a quick break. Um, so you, the listener, can hear a little bit more about Lupus LA and some lupus facts. We'll be right back uh, with Kimmy. Lupus LA offers virtual support groups on a weekly basis and a bilingual and family support groups once every month. Visit our website at lupusla.org. We're back uh, with the Lupus LA Your Story, Our Fight podcast. We're talking to Kimmy Delahunty. Um, and we were talking about art and creativity. And um, and now I think we want to dive into a little bit of um, your mental health story. So tell us, when did your depression diagnosis come into play as it relates to lupus and Addison's, mm-hmm. et cetera? I was diagnosed with depression in 2020. So just this last year. And it really was brought up because of the pandemic and some of those, you know, being isolated and navigating all these difficult conversations with people and family. Um, so that really brought it to my attention a little, a little more than before. I think I had probably been living with depression for several years and just didn't know. Um, I didn't know that that's what it was. And, you know, none of my doctors ever asked about my mental health or asked mm-hmm. how I was doing in, in that regard. Um, so after kind of dealing with some really intrusive thoughts and just things that were brand new to me, I you know, decided to see a psychiatrist and I had already been seeing a therapist a little bit before then. Um, and was kind of doing everything that you're supposed to do to take care of your mental health and still was really struggling. And that's when I decided, okay, I think I need to, I need a little more help here. And so saw a psychiatrist and was able to get diagnosed with depression officially. Mm -hmm. And do you attribute sort of how much does the lupus and the autoimmune side come into play when you're talking about the depression side? I think they are entirely intertwined with each other. Um, You know, it's, it's really hard when you're dealing with all these different diagnosis and you're like, you know, what, what is causing this, which one, and there's no map, you know, there's nothing that you can look at. That's like, yep, that's the lupus. You got to work on that. You know, it's very Mm -hmm. much everything intertwines together. It's complex, you know, but I think definitely, you know, it's a heavy load to take care of yourself when you live with a chronic illness. It's, it's exhausting because you're already exhausted from living with a chronic illness and you still have to take care of all these other things navigate insurance, navigate this and that, you know, make time for doctor's appointments, struggle to show up to work, you know, and then there's all that guilt that is associated with those feelings as well. And so I think that when I look at lupus and depression, to me, they're almost one in the same, of course, you know, depression is its own thing and lupus is its own thing. But I don't know if I would have depression if I didn't have lupus. But I think to me, they're, they're, you know, together. And do you think that the depression has an impact on your lupus in the sense, you know, has, has the depression caused you a lupus flare or, you know, does it work the other way? Yes, I think that definitely happens. There are some times where I am stuck in a lupus flare for a while and then depression starts to creep in because it's hard. It's, you know, it, it triggers it. Um, very often, you know, when you're stuck in bed, it's, it's not the most fun thing, you know, it can bring up negative emotions and negative feelings, it can bring up anxiety for me. Um, So definitely that way, but also, you know, if I'm feeling down mentally, and I'm struggling with my depression, I can definitely feel that my lupus symptoms can start to creep in with that as well. So they definitely go hand in hand together and influence each other. And what's been sort of the most, um, I mean, obviously getting the proper medical care was important, but what's been sort of the, the best advice you could give to somebody who suffers from depression in terms of, of how to, um, to manage that as best you can? 
I think therapy has been the number one helpful thing for me in my journey with depression and specifically with lupus. I found a therapist who specializes in chronic illness and it has been so helpful. She herself has a chronic illness and has been able to just offer a lot of tools and support in that way. Um, And even if someone's not dealing with lupus or another chronic illness, therapy in general, there's just so many things that I have learned that have I've kind of added to my toolkit of things that I can do when I, when I do feel depression coming in, or even when I have a flare coming in, things that I can do that combat those negative emotions that can come with that, um, or that can sort of just help me to show up in a better place mentally. You know, I've learned all of that in therapy and it's just been incredible. And I, I think that it is definitely the number one thing I recommend to anyone living with depression, but anyone even diagnosed with lupus, even if before you're, you know, you might not get to that depression stage, um, or you might not experience mental health challenges in your journey with lupus. But I think that it is a challenging life. And there's lots of challenges that come with it, lots of hardships, and just things that you have to navigate as a lupus patient. And having a place where you can safely talk about those is so helpful. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that for sure. Um, so tell me, I we on a previous podcast, I asked somebody about dating and relationships, and uh, it got a very um, a big response from the audience that they were really interested in hearing more about that. So, and I I really asked that a lot to people who are. Um, you know, whose diagnoses is early on in life, because I think it does sort of change your, all the calculations you have to make. And so I'm wondering, uh, I know you're married and I, I was sort of wondering how your diagnosis has affected, but all of your diagnoses have affected your relationships as you've navigated all of this. Yeah, I think that's a great question. And I am very lucky that I was actually dating my husband before I was diagnosed with lupus. So we are high school sweethearts. We have been together for a very long time. I think at the time of my lupus diagnosis, we had been together already for like four, four years. Um, so when I was diagnosed, diagnosed with lupus, he was one of those people that was there for me. That was so supportive and, um, really helped me through it. And, you know, actually right after I was diagnosed with lupus, I was so, you know, overwhelmed with emotions and and had just had that really negative experience at the doctor. And I, my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time was working at Starbucks and I knew he was there at Starbucks. So I drove to Starbucks straight from the doctor and just like walked in 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 tears. And he just, you know, walked out of Starbucks while he was working and just like kind of consoled me outside. And it's like one of the sweetest moments from our relationship that I remember from, you know, our early years together. I think our relationship has definitely been impacted by lupus. Um, You know, it is, it's, it's hard to navigate alone. And as a couple, you know, he's navigating it with me. Um, And, you know, all of the losses and that I experienced, he experienced too, and all the wins he experiences too. So it's definitely a journey that we're taking together. Um, And even the last year, as I've struggled more with my mental health, it has, you know, shown up more in our relationship and has presented a lot of challenges for us as a couple. And being in therapy has been a really great tool for that, because I can also talk about ways, you know, how can I, how can I, like share this with my husband in a way he understands how can I you know get support from him and let him know the best ways to support me so just together we've really been able to work on it and it is work it takes a lot of work to get to a place in a relationship especially when you're dealing with something that is so confusing to others who don't experience it you know um it is a lot of work but we work on it together and I'm so lucky to have a partner who is just the most supportive ever, you know, like he yeah. is amazing. No, I can, uh, I can chime in with a, a, that. That's a big, a big factor for me too. Um, but your husband knows how to make the perfect latte so that, you know, <laughs> I don't know. That's a, yes, that's a bo- bonus. That's a bonus, <laughs> I guess. Right. Um, <clears throat> so tell me about, I know you have some new work coming out and I really want to, I think 
you know, I think work that comes from such an amazingly grounded place and special place deserves to be really celebrated. And so I want everybody to kind of understand what you're about to come out with and what it means and where they can see it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I am. I'm super excited about it. Um, I have basically curated an art collection this last year through the pandemic that is heavily entirely inspired by my journey with lupus, my journey with, you know, depression and mental health, but also those things in the midst of the pandemic, which has been, you know, for immunocompromised people, a really scary time, a really just time filled with unknowns. There's a lot of just like questions and you don't know. It's been a journey for sure, for me at least. And so I turned to art to sort of express how I'm feeling and to find positivity and um, motivation within those feelings because, you know, there were times where I was like, I just don't even want to keep going in a world where people don't want to wear masks and no one wants to protect me. And, you know, just a lot of heavy emotions the last year that I channeled into art. And I'm coming out with this collection. A percentage will be donated back to Lupus LA's emergency grant fund, which I'm so excited about. Um, and I haven't decided on the release date yet, but it will be sometime this month. So you can follow me on Instagram at create with Kinney for all the updates. Um, and my Etsy shop is the same name, but it'll include all sorts of art that is colorful and just really sort of about finding positivity, finding gratitude within the challenges um, and sort of facing each day with that mindset. And so I'm excited to come out with it. It's going to have stickers and prints and greeting cards and all sorts of stuff. Anything with stickers. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm your man because I have a almost five-year-old daughter. So stickers are, are the thing. So, um, but I think that's really, it's super cool to hear that. I think that, um, you know, I, I've seen your Instagram and I know how bright and inspiring it is. And I'm so excited to be able to share that with our Lupus LA audience. And uh, we certainly appreciate um, your contributions to Lupus LA and we wish you um, nothing but good health and happiness. And I really appreciate you being here on the podcast. And uh, we look forward to, to many more adventures together. Yes. Thanks so much for having me. On behalf of the entire team at Lupus LA, we thank you for joining the Your Story, Our Fight podcast. Please tune in, spread the word, and come back for more inspiring lupus stories. I'm your host, Adam Selkowitz, wishing you good health, and to always remember, your story is our fight.